We've got um, a lot to talk about today, starting off with our first topic of the panel, and that is regarding our new signing, Manor Solomon, and our latest signing, Manor Solomon. We'll start with you, HG. What, what's your feeling around the Manor Solomon signing, and do you think it's a good signing for Spurs? Yeah, I, I do. I mean, obviously, it's a free transfer of a guy who's played the Premier League football, played Champions League football, and he's young and incredibly talented. And if he only has that one trick of finding the far corner with a curling shot, I'm all right with that because you'll do it often enough for Spurs. But I, I don't see any reason to dislike um, the signing. I think it should be a good one. There's very little risk. Yeah, you know, a lot of there's been kind of mixed reactions within the Spurs fan base. A lot of people maybe wanting someone more prevalent in the game that's been there, done that, um, and done more than Manor Solomon. You know, Manor, he had good spurts last season with that five, six game stretch where he scored, I think, five or six in a row. But it was a lot of inconsistencies there. So do you not buy into that at all? I mean, he's not coming in to be a first choice, is he? So, like, I think it just strengthens an area. Like, I mean, you could sit here and say that maybe we don't need someone who can play mostly down the left in an attacking sense. There are a number of players already at Spurs who can do that. But um, I just think that if, if you took it as a, as a move on its own, then it's a decent one by the club. I mean, maybe he'll turn into the new son and we'll be laughing. And he probably won't. But I just think that when we're looking for players to to come in and maybe be... A, a very good rotational uh, person than someone who's 23 and, as I said, international, has scored goals at every competition he's played in, we could have done a lot worse. I certainly didn't want to spend 15, 20 million on another person to maybe come and, and be that role. So I think it's a good signing by the club. Yeah, I, I do agree with you, HG. Uh, David, how are you feeling on the topic? Yeah, look, I think it's a clever signing by the club. You know, we need a, a body up in one of them forward areas out wide, especially with Sonny going off to the Asian Games in January. And I think you've got AFCON as well going on. So, like, we, we, we needed someone in that area. But, you know, we didn't have the massive amounts of money to get a player of that quality in without sort of hampering what we're going to do in, in, in that defence and stuff like that. So I think it's a piece of smart business that you've sort of added strength and depth to one area, but also saving your money to be able to go and get that defence that we need. And look, I, I can get why there hasn't been a hysteria around it. Ben, we sort of had this conversation the other day, right? It's off the back of a massive signing like Madison. Also, many Spurs fans preferred centre-backs coming in here. Um, you know, and, and, and also the, t the, the tickets were put up as well. So it was sort of announced during a time where maybe Spurs fans were a bit sort of annoyed with the club. So there hasn't been that hysteria around it. But at the end of the day, you know, he's very similar to Sonny in that he likes to get on the ball, cut inside, put one into the bottom corner, you know. And uh, this is a guy that adds versatility right across the front line. He can play calm left and right. And he, he, he likes to he likes to beat his man as well, which is something that we've been missing at Tottenham that, uh, you know, over the last few years. Too many players that want to just pass the ball on, shirk the responsibility. Uh, one thing that I think many fans would uh, like about Manor Solomon is he, yeah, a lot of his good work actually comes from deeper, where he likes to drop deep, get on the ball, get turned, and, and see the game in front of him and play. So for me, I think it's a smart, smart option all around by the club. However, I will say, I don't think they would have signed him if there was a fee involved. Yeah, it's an intro. Would you still feel the same way about the transfer? Um, about you know, everyone, I think everyone can agree as a free transfer, it's a good transfer, but we're talking about the impact that he could potentially have in Tottenham. Would you still feel the same way about this transfer if we don't go and push the boat out on these center backs and he does become one of our main transfers? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't look. We all know that the whole world knows we need centre backs. It's our biggest Achilles heels. It's our biggest problem. If we kept a few more clean sheets or conceded a few less goals last season, we wouldn't be sitting here enjoying a campaign this season with no European football. We'd be back in European football. So if the club neglects centre back again, expect the same shit that we've seen in the previous few seasons to prevail yet again. It does not matter what we do in forward areas. We have King. We have Son. Some of the best players in the world in their positions that bag our goals. But the support cast behind them are just nowhere near good enough. And as much as we sit here and as Spurs fans, you know, we do sort of prefer our team to attack and outscore opponents and stuff like that. We want to see goals. But at some stage, we have to recognise the importance of keeping clean sheets. You know, especially if we want to go and win trophies, which is what most Spurs fans talk about, dream about, that they demand from this football club. You have to have that solid backline, and until we get that, things won't change. So, of course, it'll um, you know dampen the signing completely or piss me off if it's one of our main signings, because it shouldn't be. That should be a signing 
that is there to add strength and depth in all the areas. Yeah, you're talking about the value of keeping clean sheets. I'm not sure our manager uh, feels the same way about that, to be honest. But uh, <laughs> Sim, what I'm are you feeling about Manuel? Over clean sheets, <laughs> um, look, in, in, I'm a bit. I am personally a bit conflicted about the signing because he's not someone I would have wanted to bring in um, at the beginning of the window. I was um, really when when Tottenham was in talk, um, talking about signing a winger um, for next season. I was at, I was really looking for one who I really believed could potentially rival or even um, you know Son could pass the baton on to when if if Son truly is on a decline, someone who could really push Sonny for next season, someone who actually we could believe could potentially rival Son for. The that left wing spot um, in the first team next season. And I do believe we've gone for the cheaper option in going for a Manuel Solomon who's on a free transfer. Yes, he's 23 years of age. He's a young winger. I actually do believe he has some of the qualities that Ange probably wants um, a winger to have in terms of his ability to take take on a man. But um, I was... I, I obviously source a lot of his um, good qualities at Fulham with the, some of the goals he was scoring but overall I, when he was on the pitch albeit we didn't get a massive sample size because he was injured for a lot of it I wasn't too impressed I thought a lot of the times he was uh, anonymous within the game and I thought even though he did score but spectacular goals I didn't see he didn't seem to be a player who was always getting in like very dangerous positions looking to hurt the opposition he seemed to be a player who always looked for the spectacular and kind of dribbles a lot with his head down not what someone who likes to um kind of uh bring other players into play he's a bit he's a player who, who would look frustrate you i feel but I don't get me wrong um, he's still very young he clearly has um, immense uh, talent we've seen that for Shakhtar in the Champions League he scored against Man City he scored against Real Madrid um, we saw that at Spurs for Fulham as well with some of the unbelievable goals he was scoring in, over a short spurt so I'm not I'm, if it is brought, if he is brought in, obviously to sit on the bench and you know come on as a sub or uh, fill in when Son's injured, then I think it is that, and that's probably what he is brought in for. Then I think it is probably smart as a free transfer, low risk. Um, if it goes well, you know you've got all of a sudden a twenty million pound player there. Um, if it goes badly, you can still probably make a profit of five ten million. So I think it makes sense. But I think if we really wanted to move the needle a bit more for next season, I would have wanted a, a, a winger, someone like a Nico Williams from Atletico Bilbao someone who could who I really believed can push the needle a bit more because if Son we don't know what's going to happen with Son next year as much as we all hope he gets back to his best and I believe that he can there is a chance that his decline is real and that maybe he won't hit the heights that he did a couple of years ago getting golden boot and stuff like that and if that's the case, all of a sudden we are a bit hamstrung. And I, if we, but if we had someone who we really believed could rival him and actually potentially take his spot or have a chance to, then all of a sudden that that I think pushes that each player can push each other and we have more of a squad. But I do in terms of him playing the role that he's brought into that he's, that we have brought him into. It's a fine signing. I just wouldn't have brought in a player for that role, if you understand what mm. I'm saying. But I'm not mad at the signing. I think he could be a smart signing. HG, do you get, do you get what Simeon's getting at a little bit with, um, you know, with Son being on the wrong side of 30, should we not be bringing in someone that can take up that mantle that when Son eventually does leave, um, can take that mantle up? Yeah, obviously we need to be thinking long term. I mean, the Kane and Son aren't going to be at Spurs forever. Um, as much as I would love that to be the case. So, yeah, I understand. I think that because we don't have unlimited funds and any money that we are going to spend is most likely going to go on a centre-back. We spent a, we spent £40 million on Madison, which was a key signing. We spent money on the goalkeeper, which is another key signing. And uh, as we've all said, Manus Solomon probably wouldn't be a key signing at any point. So, and, and signing the next son right now probably isn't a key signing for Spurs. So to do it on a, to get someone in on a free transfer that has the potential to maybe be something along those lines. I'm not saying he's going to be the next son. Like he clearly doesn't have the record, um, even at 23, that Son did at the same age. And I think yeah. Son was around the same age when we signed him. But it's just this idea of it, the, the club is being smart. You know, we're not getting free transfers in like... I mean, as someone who's in their 30s to, to be a backup and hope we're, we're looking to maybe build and, and get a new team. And if Solomon ends up being part of that, and I think it does help that he clearly has an, a, a, an affection for Spurs. 
Like it means the club means something to him. He's not just a player looking for a decent ability. He's like, no, I, I'm going to go to Spurs. I want to play for Spurs, and maybe I won't be first choice in my first season. But that's okay. I back myself, and I think that's a good thing. So like, I, I understand the, the the desire to want something different, and maybe something different would be better. But I do think that certainly this summer, the attacking midfielder, the centre backs, are a much bigger need, and a, a free a, a free transfer punt, if you want to call it that, um, is not a bad thing for Spurs. Mm. Does it not maybe follow the narrative of wingers that we have signed maybe in the past under Pochettino went for NG and Nkudu, pretty much unknown names? I know Solomon did play in the Premier League and maybe he is, he is a calibre above that. But I guess my question is, is that last week we spoke about our Spurs being smart or our Spurs being cheap? I, I, I saw a comment underneath saying we're being smarter about being cheap. Uh, what would you say to that? <laughs> But a smart or cheap? I mean, clearly it's cheap. <laughs> there's, there's no doubt about that. Clearly it's cheap. Only time will tell if it's smart. But um, as Spurs have shown, sadly, spending money doesn't equal smart either. And I would rather go with that. So, like, as I said, because it's not a necessary thing, I'm okay with it. If we were going to do that for a centre-back, you, you'd start to wonder. You'd start to think, hey, this guy's only played six months in the Premier League and we're signing him on a free transfer to be our first choice left centre-back, I'd have many more reservations. But for Solomon, from what I've seen of him, I, I think that it's a, I do think it's a smart signing. And even if he never becomes the first choice left winger, the guy that will start every game, I'm, I'm happy that we, we're going to have someone who can do the things he can do. Mm. Dave, any, any comments on that one? Um, look, it's obviously cheap by the club, let's be realistic. But like HG has alluded to, there's other areas that's more important. Like, yeah. you know, I think we have to understand the stark reality of the problems we have at Tottenham Hotspur. You can't do absolutely everything in one window. The club just does not operate like that. As much as I would love to, as much as everyone on this panel, everyone watching would love the club to operate like that. They just don't. And whether, whether, whether we like it or not. And, and look, we also got to remember that... You know, we, we needed players up there. You also lost Anjuma, which we didn't want to bring back. Lucas Moore as well. And and, and one other thing, I, I'll, I'll loop back to what Sim was talking about, having an option off the bench. I mean, how many times last season did we go into the bench and it was mainly filled with centre midfielders, wing backs, and defenders? We had no forward options whatsoever. And if there was, it was either one of one forward option and a U, and a, and a U kid, which Antonio Conte was never, ever going to bring off the bench anyway. So we do have to realise that we do need to bolster them options off the bench, especially under Ange Postecoglou. Anyone that knows this guy, he wants his system to be relentless for 90 minutes. And how he does that is he uses the bench. He utilises them five substitutions freshens things up and keeps things relentless and at the end of the day we need players to come off the bench and I get this guy is nowhere near the finished article like you know he could he needs to add more goals more assists a bit like what Sonny does to sort of really be that sort of finished article but for me we need these options and you got to remember with this guy his, his sort of career has been disrupted by what's gone on between Ukraine and Russia that's not his fault well if you get the player that was that had the promise that he had at Shakhtar the next the player that had a say in helping Shakhtar do Madrid twice over in the group stage in the Champions League you have a real player on your hands and for all we know you know with everything that's gone on with, with, with him having to sort of move on and everything else because of the war and everything else, it sort of put his life up in upheaval. And sometimes things like that can take a little time to sort of come back from, to sort of get yourself back to a, a normal sort of state and stuff like that. So for me, I think it's a signing based more on his potential than anything else. And let's see what happens. Look, we've been too quick at this football club over the last three to four years just to write off new players coming into this club. Every, you know, we've done it with Kulu famously. He doesn't have enough pace, this, that, and the other. And I get why. I get it, right? Because things, and the longer things go on the way they have done, the more signings that we make, every single one of them be criticised before they get in this door because we're not seeing improvements. Once we do see the improvements on the football pitch, which will come when we sign Spencer, backs um you know then i think we'll start sort of giving signings more of a chance but for me i think it's a shrewd acquisition and we know where that money the proportion of that money needs to go this this summer and it has to be that back line 